Good evening. What's your view on apostrophes? You know, those little top commas that are supposed to appear in text denoting possession or an abbreviation. When you're writing, do you not bother with them? Or are you one of those people who suffers a blind rage when one's missing? Well, I'm, I don't rant and rave about them in national newspapers like some, but I do get a bit irritated when an expected apostrophe is absent and even more irritated when one appears where it shouldn't. And the reason for my concern is down to Arthur. Arthur Cockrell, to give him his full name. Now, unless you were a theatre-goer in the 1960s North East England, you might not have heard of him. He was a locally well-known actor and theatre critic, but more importantly, from my point of view, he was my school English teacher. Now, I'd always enjoyed stringing a few words together and writing stories, and Mr Cockrell quickly recognised that and took steps to harness it. And harness it, he did. First thing he discovered was that I was born idle. He saw that I could write pretty well, but I, I needed a firecracker underneath me, and he pointed this out on a number of occasions. Indeed, I recall that he once illustrated the point with the aid of a slipper. As I progressed through the years, I saw Mr Cockrell more as a friend than a teacher, as far as that was possible in those days. Teachers and students didn't normally form friendships, particularly at a school like ours, where, where firm discipline was the order of the day. But it was much easier to hold an adult conversation as a fairly mature 16-year-old than as a precocious 12-year-old. And one thing had become very clear over the years. Almost everything I wrote had an element of humour in it. An admirable trait in some respects, but not, as Arthur pointed out, in exams. Those whose job it was to mark essays, it seems, did not have a sense of humour. When someone sat through and read a hundred or so essays, their humour gland apparently withers and dies. So I did make genuine efforts to keep my compositions more serious, but for some reason I found it difficult. Although he drove me hard, much harder than he did with any of the other kids in my class, I knew that he believed in me. I was very grateful for that. Just before my old level English exam, which involved writing an essay, he strongly reminded me about the importance of keeping it serious. And I told him that I would. There'd be a selection of titles given and I must choose one for my essay. My serious essay. However, there was one title, I can't for the life of me remember what it was, that was just asking to be sent up. And even with Mr Cockrell's words still echoing in my ears, I found myself doing just that. I knew that it was a, it was a height of folly, but I just couldn't help myself. Oh, well, I got the pass all right, but it wasn't a brilliant grade. Sorry about that, Arthur. And some years ago, I heard that Mr Cockrell had passed away. Sad news, very sad news indeed. But somehow, I still feel his presence whenever I'm writing anything. Believe me, I don't need spell the spell check facility on my computer. I wouldn't dare misspell a word, or even misuse an apostrophe for that matter. Even as I write this, I can feel his breath on the back of my neck. And remember last week, when I said I woke up on that Sunday morning, in a panic, not having the faintest clue what I was going to read at our service? And then it suddenly all came flooding to me in a deluge that I had to write down. That, I'm certain, was the work of Mr Cockrell. I could almost see the slipper being flexed before my very eyes, and I had no choice but to complete the task before breakfast. And I did. From having nothing at all, only two hours earlier, I suddenly had on my tablet a full reading. So thank you, Arthur, for last week's reading, and indeed for this week's. Thank you.